Let me get this straight. So Thomas Tuchel is under pressure because he's lost a few games. And a lot of people are looking at him now and saying, maybe it's time for the change. What? Just because one Chelsea ITK did an article, which was very good if I must add. But it doesn't mean we have to question Thomas Tuchel's position at the club. That shouldn't even be a conversation. I want to shut it down here. Welcome to the Gaff Guys You Peeps. I've got three major stories for you guys today. Three major stories. Number one, Thomas Tuchel is apparently under pressure and we're going to talk about that. And I'm going to shut it down and tell you why it's absolutely stupid and we've got the best manager in charge, maybe in the league. Second best, 100%. Then we're going to talk about João Felix. João is available. Felix has been absolutely smoking amazing, right, in his youth career, in his time in Portugal, and it's not working out at Fleco Madrid. Yet, you lot think we should have spent 100 million on Lukaku, but not go get this guy when his agent is calling out and saying, my player wants to leave. I'm going to break it down for us. And finally, Chelsea's January window hints are there. And ITK reports that Chelsea won Wesley Fofana and Matson, and we're going to talk about that in good detail. And what does it mean for Rudiger and Alonso? Let's get into it. But before we get started, make sure you hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, and it goes a long way when you support the channel. It really does. I appreciate it. You get great content, and more importantly, let's hope it's a good omen for Chelsea because at the end of the day, we all love this club, and we're here. Different opinions, it doesn't matter. We are here to discuss the team we love. And some people don't understand that. They think because we love one team, we're always meant to agree. But that doesn't happen. Communities like mine will always flourish because we'll be honest and respectful. We don't call each other's names. We tell each other, listen, you're wrong because of this. Listen, you're right. I agree with you on this. And that's a healthy way of being. That's how the places move forward. Instead of always being with the norm, oh, uh, I think this, and you can't change my mind ever. So let me get this straight. Now. Thomas Tuchel has gone through a little bad run, and all of a sudden we've had a few bad injuries, and now people are right, releasing articles. And this is how it starts. This is absolutely how it starts. Nazir is a great, great journalist. I actually really like his work. I find him reputable. I think find him honest, and I think he has integrity in the way he writes. And if anyone realized it, it was the biggest job of clickbait ever. I've got no issue with clickbait. At the end of the day, he's got his mouth to feed. He needs to be putting food on his table. And part of the reason he's, where he's going to do that is by generating more clicks and having more people see how much of a quality writer he is. It's a marketing tool. But the message of it was basically, let me break it down for you. Thomas Tuchel is going through a bad run of form. Many Chelsea managers have went through this and Roman Abramovich ended up pulling the trigger. Whilst that's respectful, I don't think that relates to the one and only Thomas Tuchel. And the reason why it shouldn't relate to we won the Champions League, got to an FA Cup final, we're in a title race, and this was all being done in under a year. How on earth are we even going to be discussing his future or saying the pressure's on? We're going through a bad run with a bunch of injuries. It's about time we back our manager and we don't be reactionary nor brittle in our emotions when people bring topics up that are in the hemisphere. Just to put it in context, because I think a lot of people don't understand. Here is a great statistic, right? Under Frank Lampard and Thomas Tuchel last season, we got 66 points and barely scraped the Champions League. When Frank left us, we were on 33 points, I think, if I'm not mistaken. Now, already, we are on 33 points. We're absolutely smashing it. And we've, we're have we basically, trajectory is going in the right direction. And more importantly, I think it's unrealistic to think that Chelsea are going to get 90 points and 99 points this year. Because how did we go from dropping points in 19 games to coming into this now? No, it doesn't make sense. We are going to lose some games we are gonna draw and you know what I think I was very emotionally angry after the Zenit game because I knew the implications that way it meant it means we won't top the group it means we get a harder team it means blah 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 you know the deal but with this I want to be realistic tomorrow is a big opportunity for Chelsea to make a claim slap leads and move on with some positivity and I think we need to start building some momentum because the first of January we're gonna have Liverpool and Man City after those two games, I will tell you where I think we're going to finish. Because that's when we will know. So, at this moment in time, I think we should back our manager. Stop getting hyper-dramatic whenever we see articles like this, i.e. me. But, at the same time, we need to be realistic and have these friendly conversations. But let's get on with my pick, who I think we should be signing next up. Peeps, Juan Felix is a no-brainer. So, Mendes has come out, Jorge Mendes, his agent, and openly said, Look, my player's not happy, he wants to leave, he wants to change. Blah, 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 along those lines. You guys saw it. The reality is, he needs to go. This kid, 
This is what happens when you get bad advice in life. He was smashing it in Lisbon, in Benfica. He was coming through as one of the greatest prospects they've ever had. He was absolutely balling. The foundations were laid. He was meant to be a great. The only problem is he went after money to Atletico Madrid. It's a profile that did not suit a certain club. He has flair, they have grit. He has technical ability, they've got defensive solidity. He has style, they've got park the bus. All right, he drives a Rari, they've got a van. That, that, there's a difference, they should have never worked. They really should never have been. He suits teams with a little bit more technical prowess, teams that are gonna be attacking and retaining the ball. He ha needs to have a lot of touches on the ball and Athletic Madrid doesn't give that to him. And my question here for all of you is, why on earth did we sign Romelu Lukaku for 100 million? when he doesn't fit our style, when this kid would fit us. Look, there are some deals that we could throw them away. We know they're like Alonso, dash him Alonso. Give him Saul back, or if needed, pay for Saul if it means we get this guy. Because this guy is a future Ballon d'Or winner. That's the level of talent that we're looking at. Let's think about it, right? He is an elite level player, yet a lot of people don't give him the respect he deserves. And they won't give him the respect he deserves because of his statistics. But in reality, he's had a lot of bench minutes and he's not representing himself in the finest way. So for me, if we could, I would sign him. I'm scared he's gonna go to Liverpool, Manchester City, or even worse, Manchester United. Right, now we're gonna be talking about the one and only what is gonna happen in January. And this is big for me because Chelsea have got serious issues, whether it's contractual issues or injuries. At this moment in time, I don't think we're gonna sign any centre midfielders. I think we are good for centre midfielders. There's a potential of Billy Gilmore coming back and it was spoken about, but I don't see it happen and I really don't. I think Billy is gonna be gone. Like, Billy is gone for the summer and then he'll be back and then he'll have to make a claim to get back in it. Then there's Wesley Fofana. And Wesley Fofana for me is the interest. The report is from Nazir again, ITK, in the know. He's saying Chelsea will track him. Chelsea aren't gonna go in now. Chelsea will track him after his injury to see how the individual recovers. For me, this is the smartest thing to do. The kid's contract is expiring soon. I think he's a free agent next summer, so he's got a year left on his deal. Chelsea could potentially just wait, see how he recovers from his injury, and then actively go and pursue and grab him. I think that's the right time to do it. When the contract is low, go and get an elite level talent. Arsenal say he, they have the Mbappe of center back. Well, the reality is your Mbappe of center backs is going out on loan when this kid, Wesley Fofana, who was his teammate and his partner, came in and took the Premier League by storm. Chelsea could actively use him. He's a great right-hand sided centre back, good on the ball, athletic, smart, little bit short. That could be a potential issue, but he's assertive, so I don't know how that's gonna Playing alongside Thiago Silva, I could see it work perfect. Once Silva goes, I think we'll need someone else. So I'm very excited to see what's gonna happen there. But he's one that gets me very excited. Second one, Ian Matson apparently will be coming back. And a lot of people are saying Ian Matson coming back is a must. I'm gonna say I haven't seen enough of him since I saw him live once or twice. From what I saw of him when I saw him live, I think he was a very good baller. Neat in possession, athletic, charismatic on the ball, not scared to express himself, gets to the byline, good crossing ability. Very Dutch footballer. You know, sounding technical, but he's a Cobham footballer. Someone that was raised in our academy, played multiple positions, enhanced his game, and is comfy on the top level. The higher the level he plays, the more comfortable he will look. So for me, when I think of it from that standpoint, it's like, yeah, it makes brilliant sense. But if he comes back and it's projected that Chilwell could potentially be out till mid-January and not the whole season now, what do we do then? Do we just disrupt his whole education? Do we just cut the games and keep him on the bench? Because Alonso will have to play unless he leaves. So that's where the interesting aspect arrives. And we need to be very realistic and very humble about what we do. Because we're playing with a player's career here. And this is the important part for me. We are playing with an individual's future and his career. So for me, I'm bringing him back. Because a lot of people saying he's even better than Alonso. How will we ever know? Because we didn't know with Trevor Chalabar. And to any of you that did say you knew, hats off to you. But for me, I didn't know with Trevor Chalabar and I was surprised. And now, with Matson, what if we're surprised again? And more importantly, how good is Alonso anyway? Like, Alonso disrupts our play a lot. Matson's more comfortable in possession, I can tell you that right now, for free. So, that will help. So, I'm saying, bring him back, I am. I'm, or, go and get Emerson Palmieri back. But I don't see that happening, because Leon look like they're gonna activate 20 million pounds and take him. And Chelsea won't have no issue with that, because they wanna get him off the books. 
But peeps, this was my video. Hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, let me know your thoughts. And tomorrow there'll be a match review straight after the game. You know the deal. Peace out, I'm out. Bye.